Hey guys, welcome to the Good Enough Guy Crafts channel. You are with Mr. Shannon. We're going to do a, a PC rebuild. And I'm take, going to take apart my old machine and put it in the new box that you recently saw me do a um, an unboxing for. So, let's get to it, huh? So this is the instructions for my new box and it is not really clear. I have to figure out how to open the top of the case. So after checking the instructions, it says prize the left side cover open from the back. And I assume that means pry the left side cover from the back. But there's really no instruction on what to do or how to do it. You'll see me fiddle with it here in a moment. Here I go struggling with it, trying to line it up, figure it out. There's two little open notches in the side, but it still doesn't really tell you how to take this damn thing off. And after fiddling with it for a moment, I feel it pop, and I realize the other side pops. Now it's still taped to the front of the machine, so we're going to have to peel that off. And here we see that it has these three little tabs that lock into the bottom part of the case. Something I didn't expect, nor was it explained in the instruction manual. In fact, I found little help with the instruction manual at all while I was doing this. And we're going to run it up to 350% while I pop this thing apart and take apart the other one. Uh, for brevity, you don't need to watch three hours of me fiddling with this. Now, I was talking while I was building this, but I decided that it was uh, a lot less important than actually building it. Except for right here. Now, I got a buddy named Tech Priest Mac who takes his... Uh, computer components and electronics very seriously and I know he's just gonna have something to say about the fact that I am NOT wearing an anti-static wrist strap I decided to just go all in on this guy um, basically YOLO it which I normally do when I build computers so this my old PC was built on an external frame I thought it was cool looking for a while but over time it just got wobbly and didn't seem to feel like it was sturdy even though it looked really cool. Uh, everything's just bolted to the outside of this and in fact the CD-ROM drive is double sided taped to the top of the uh, power supply. Now I have a habit of doing all kinds of crazy stuff with my wires. I don't like to see my wires so uh, what I call, what you might call channeling, I am just basically wrapping these wires around stuff and getting creative, hiding them wherever I can, which does create kind of a, a small difficulty when I'm disassembling. So you see right here, I'm just kind of struggling with this uh, power cable, this motherboard power cable here. There we go. my hard drive now this is just a data drive uh, there is an m.2 drive attached to the motherboard that runs 500 gigs if I'm not mistaken this is a two or three terabyte I don't really remember of course Seagate while I was doing this I was trying to figure out what part I'm going to take apart next uh, Due to all the wacky placements of the wires and everything being so tightly uh, assembled, uh, I was basically just uh, picking stuff at random here and there. So I actually made this part here for the uh, for the USBs. Here goes the power button. You 
knows how long some of these wires are. They're literally wrapped around stuff. I got a little confused about this wire. Um, I forgot that this uh, processor fan was actually an ARGB and it has a power and a controller wire. I spent about 10 minutes trying to figure this out. I just could not remember. So that's an AS Rock Pro, I want to say 560 board. I've got 128 gigs of RAM on this guy. I maxed it out because of my woodworking program. Uh, uses a lot of power for rendering. There's the RTX 30. 60 that I recently purchased. And time to remove the main board from the frame. And of course, I'm going to leave the processor, processor fan, and RAM right on there. I'm not going to mess with the M2 drive at all. I say it is not nearly as good as it used to. You'll see me leaning in real close. Uh, on this frame, it's all held together with these little uh, tiny little screws in the extruder, uh, aluminum extruded uh, frame. Oh, look, the new box has an RGB controller in the back with lots of wires. I have never messed with one of these before. I actually spent a copious amount of time trying to figure out where all these wires go and how to utilize them. Uh, I've cut a lot of that out of this video before I even sped it up. So it gets a little jumpy, I apologize, but anybody who's built computers knows that uh, this can get a little bit tedious. Checking the constructions again without success. I should have just balled it up and thrown it behind my shoulder. Alright, messing with the new power supply, Sama power supply, 1200 watts, or should I say I was matching up my cables with my components. This power supply came with a lot of different options. I really only needed the, uh, the two power cords for the, the mainboard processor and I needed a SATA power. And I needed one for the uh, video card. I was overthinking it. Now, due to the design of this case, I did not have a spot for the DVD-ROM drive. I personally love having one available. I don't like to rely on digital everything. I still like my media, uh, especially a lot of the old stuff that I own. I still want to be able to play it. So. Um, Obviously, I could not install it in this machine. I'll have to get an external enclosure for my DVD-ROM drive. There's a hard drive going into the little bracket that slides on the bottom inside, hidden underneath the motherboard.
and it was getting dark and the lights above me are not very bright so busted out the trusty flashlight All right, there we go, checking my standoffs to make sure they'll fit my ATX motherboard. Pop them in by hand. I went and tightened them with uh, first a small pair of pliers, but then I got myself one of the uh, hex nut drivers. And of course, putting in a motherboard with the uh, processor and processor fan on it is a little difficult on the top left screw which was a hassle so here I'm fidgeting with the wires trying to make sure I'm putting everything where I need it to go uh, the most difficult wire to get in was the one right above the processor it's a 6 plus 2 pin that thing is always a pain to get in You'll notice on the back side of this there's no plate uh, I actually lost the plate for this motherboard I have no idea where it went I searched did not find it and I figured screw it I'll just leave it open don't care there's my wiring mess so that's one of the things about trying to channel or wire the board without uh, having a big wiring mess inside the case is that you end up with a big mess on the back side of the main board tray but as long as it doesn't affect your cooling and no one has to look at it who cares right one would say that uh, all things considered messy wiring job on the back side hidden is good enough especially if the front looks great SATA cable for the hard drive that thing could really have been shorter <laughs> but you know sometimes we reuse the uh, the old stuff right oh there it is that's that damn 6 plus 2 pin going in right there I think I spent 20 minutes on that You'll notice I am uh, taking some zip ties and tying everything back a little bit as I go. Getting the stuff out of the way so I don't have to uh, check it again and again. It helps to know what I've already done so I don't have to do it again. So a fun fact here is that uh, once I got all my wiring done, everything was tied back, the whole case was closed, I brought it into the office and I hooked it up and it did not turn on. I had to take it all apart again, not all the way, but took the back side off and the front cover off to see what was missing. I had actually uh, missed the power button pins on the power header on the motherboard. Pins in, closed it up and Put it on a stand and powered right up no problem the thing is beautiful and here you go check it out well here she is the finished product guys i just absolutely love the fans in this case they have a three-dimensional effect to them it did come with all three of these argb fans and this is temper glass in the front and the side. Wiring job looks fantastic from the front. The back side, however, looks a little messy. I cannot ask for a better job here. 
check that out just absolutely fantastic i love it just want to thank you guys for checking out our channel give us some likes some share shares subscribes tell your friends engage with us in the comments we'll be happy to talk to you man by the way this this particular project right here is way better than good enough be well